हेलो फ्रेंड्स प्रेस द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड द बेल आइकन फॉर मोर सच वीडियो अपडेट्स फ्रेंड्स फॉर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट एंजाइम्स क्वेश्चंस आर एक्चुअली एग्जाम व्हेन यू टॉक अबाउट एंजाइम इट इज एन एंजाइम एन मींस एंजाइम मींस ईस्ट इट मींस इट वाज आइसोलेटेड फ्रॉम ईस्ट विलियम कोन इन 1878 केम अप विद द टर्म एंजाइम जे बी समना वाज द फर्स्ट साइंटिस्ट टू आइसोलेट यूरिएस फ्रॉम द जैक बीन when we talk about types of enzyme there are basically two types of enzyme endoenzyme and exoenzyme when i say endoenzyme it simply means the site of production and site of action is same so it is endoenzyme in exoenzyme the site of production of enzyme and site of action is different what we need to understand the enzyme action that plays a very important role they are very much specific in their actions they react with specific substrate only we all know lock and key hypothesis and lock and key mechanism where the enzyme will be big like a lock and the substrate will be small like a key so like every lock has a fixed key every enzyme is going to have a fixed substrate so all the enzyme and the substrate they will bind to each other at the active site and when they bind we get enzyme substrate complex this enzyme now alters the substrate and it converts the substrate into a product now this product will be acting as a substrate for new enzyme product when we talk about they act as a substrate for another enzyme now types of enzymes we need to understand here there are six classes of enzymes for neat exam how to remember them the shortcut is lily teacher is high oxy when we talk about lily l i is ligase l y lyase teacher is transferase is isomerase high hydrolase oxy oxido reductase so in this way you can remember lily teacher is high oxy let's understand the role of the enzyme when we talk about ligase ligase is responsible for addition so a plus b will give you ab that is a condensation reaction by utilizing energy for example it is acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase succinate thiokinase when we talk about lyase it is basically addition elimination reaction where one will eliminate the other example for this we have aldolase and we have fumarase transferase as the name suggest it is going to transfer the functional group to the next compound so here the example for transferase we have hexokinase and we have trans aminase as the functional group when we talk about isomerase isomerase we all know it is used to create isomers having same formula but different structure example for isomerase is triose phosphoisomerase phosphohexokinase are the examples when we talk about hydrolase as the name suggests there is water involved where a product will be broken down by the help of water so it is hydrolase the example of enzymes for hydrolase is choline esterase alkaline phosphatase these are the most important groups last is oxido reductase as the name suggests it is responsible for oxidation and reduction one will undergo oxidation another will undergo reduction an example for oxido reductase is nad oxido reductase enzyme or cytochrome oxidase what we need to understand enzyme activity most important thing when we talk about enzyme activity all the enzymes are going to work at a specific ph and temperature when we talk about enzyme activity ph 5.0 enzyme is inactive ph 6.8 it is most active and ph 8 it is inactive with respect to temperature 0 degree is inactive 37 most active 60 degree enzyme gets denatured due to high temperature so what we need to understand here the ph at which enzyme works maximum is the neutral ph and temperature is 37 degree celsius when we talk about properties of enzymes we need to understand enzymes accelerates the rate of reaction but they never 
initiate the reaction that is the most important part we need to understand enzymes do not participate in the reaction as a result they remain unchanged so before the reaction and after the reaction enzyme is same when we talk about the next property we need to understand that the enzymes are amphoteric in nature when we talk about amphoteric it means it can react with acid as well as it can react with base all the enzymes they are specific in their action every substrate is has a fixed enzyme for example urease can be broke can break urea invertase can break only sucrose but invertase will never break urea as there is no lock and key mechanism between them all enzymes are colloidal in nature therefore it provides larger surface area for reaction so what we need to understand when we talk about colloid colloid is a gel like substance it's a mixture of two components one is called as dispersed particle and dispersion medium when we talk about dispersed particle the size of the particle is big dispersion medium the size is small what we need to understand next is enzymes optima when we say enzyme optima means the maximum activity of the enzyme so we can say enzyme works under appropriate temperature and ph how much temperature 37 degrees celsius and ph is neutral ph factors that are going to affect the enzyme activity so when we talk about factors affecting enzyme activity first we have temperature then we have ph then we have substrate concentration and the fourth one is inhibitors when we talk about temperature enzymes are proteins in nature and we should know that at high temperature the enzyme will get denatured and at low temperature the enzymes they become inactive so more than 60 degree celsius denatured 0 degree celsius inactive whenever we talk about ph they are strong acid or strong base both will decrease the ph activity or it will denature the enzyme now with respect to neutral ph it is maximum activity of the enzyme substrate as the concentration of substrate increases the rate of reaction increases afterward it becomes constant because no enzyme is available for substrate binding competitive inhibitors and non competitive inhibitors are two types of inhibitors that will affect the enzyme activity friends let's try and understand with respect to the graph when i draw now this graph is asked in neat exam this is temperature x axis enzyme activity is on the y axis when we draw a curve we get a graph like this the peak indicates v max the maximum velocity of the reaction so y axis is ph this is enzyme activity when we draw this it is again v max so we need to understand the graph for temperature and ph is almost same as it increases after that it decreases now with respect to substrate concentration x axis substrate see when you look here you can understand after v max the enzyme activity is constant so even if you increase substrate the enzyme activity will not increase let's understand the graph for activation energy so we draw one graph where the x axis represents the progress of reaction and the y axis is going to represent potential energy of the reaction if potential energy is more means more energy is involved means enzyme is not there so let's say a graph this is substrate and product one more substrate and product reaction when you look at this lower one the potential energy is less it means activation energy with enzyme but when you look at this graph the potential energy is more so activation energy is without enzyme so whenever the reaction takes place with enzyme potential energy is less and if it takes place with and en without enzyme potential energy will be more let's take one more graph one side is substrate another one is velocity of the reaction so when we draw this graph we get a curve the peak at which it is maximum so this point is called as v max v max is maximum velocity of the reaction half of v max is v max by 2 that is km michaelis mentens constant this what we need to understand km is michaelis mentens constant 
so this graph they can come in neat exam and we need to understand the value of the graph where with respect to activation energy if the product is lower and then the substrate then we say it is exothermic reaction and if p is higher than the s then we can say the reaction is endothermic reaction so with respect to s and p we can decide when we talk about inhibitors there are two types of inhibitor competitive inhibitors and non competitive inhibitors competitive inhibitors simply means the substrate and the inhibitors both are competing to bind at the active site that is a competition going on so what are inhibitors substance which decreases the rate of reaction so competitive inhibitors resembles the substrate means i and s both appears to be same in molecular structure so they both compete and they try to bind to the active site of the enzyme since inhibitor being more strong it binds first and the substrate fails to bind this we have seen in bacterial pathogens let us take enzyme as a substrate first the inhibitors will bind to the active site of the enzyme when we talk about non competitive means there is no competition between the substrate and the inhibitor the inhibitor will not bind at the active site of enzyme it binds at some other site on the enzyme but most important it denatures the active site of the enzyme so that in future the inhibitors will destroy the active site of the enzyme and the substrate cannot bind example is cyanide poisoning so in cyanide poisoning basically it takes place where the inhibitor binds some other site other than active site and active site is destroyed that is what we need to understand now the word called as cofactor when we use the word cofactor to make enzyme catalytically active we need a cofactor it's a non protein part basically the non protein part is called as cofactor now when we talk about examples of cofactor let us assume prosthetic group these are organic compounds and tightly bound to apo enzyme now whenever we talk about apo enzyme what it is it's a protein part of enzyme now when we talk about cofactor there are three things involved in cofactor one is prosthetic group coenzyme and third one is metal ion these three are parts of the cofactor what is prosthetic group tightly bound to the apo enzyme these are tightly bound for example peroxidase and catalase they catalyze the breakdown of h2o2 to give you h2o plus o2 and heme is the prosthetic group acting for this reaction when we talk about coenzyme the cofactors for different enzymes nadp vitamin that is niacin is going to act as a coenzyme for this reaction metal ion means one of the metal ion will be involved in the reaction for example zinc is going to act as a cofactor for all the proteolytic enzymes so these are the three groups of cofactor example is carboxypeptidase hope you have understood to subscribe to the channel for more such video updates thank you very much